Welcome to Marriage Isn't Dead, where we keep monogamy hot, fun, and sexy long-term through self-improvement. In this episode, we're going to talk about husband material. And I did a, an episode a couple weeks ago about wife material. I'll do a little card up here if you want. Uh, you can check that out if you want. And this is the opposite. This one's going to be talking to the ladies this time. I'm fully aware that uh, most of my audience are men. I have plenty of ladies in my audience as well, but uh, for the guys that are listening, you can use this episode to work on yourselves if you're lacking some things. If this list shows you some things that you can work on, so be it. That's my point with this one. So this is for ladies and guys, but mainly for the ladies. Nothing is more important than the person you choose to be your spouse or long-term partner, period. In coaching. I've seen plenty of uh, bad situations with uh, with women and men. Ladies, dating is a numbers game. That goes for guys too. Dating is a numbers game. Weed out those who are lacking the ability to have a long-term relationship. Treat dating like an interview process. If someone is lacking some of these skills, it doesn't make or break that per particular person. Perhaps it can lead to other problems down the road. But no one's perfect. If someone's lacking a couple of these things, it doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Can they work on these things? Absolutely. Uh, men and women, we're all capable of learning, obviously. Uh, if you want to be a better person, you can be. Most people just don't know what that looks like. They didn't have good examples growing up. And that goes for men and women. Red flags and green flags pertain to men and women. Green flags for women don't necessarily mean they're green flags for men. Men are looking for different qualities in women, and women are diff looking for different qualities in men. That's just the way dating is. That's the way life is. But this one is about green flags in men. The kind of guys that you're looking for when it comes to husband material, long-term material, a lot of times you look on the internet, you can see some of the things that uh, that women put out there. A lot of it's negative. That goes for men too. There's a lot of negativity out there. Whenever I put a video out, I I, I almost always get negative comments, especially from guys that I've noticed. The negative Nancys out there it doesn't bother me. It's all good. If you want to comment, that's all good with me. But I am here to help you, all of you, even the negative Nancys, the the Eors out there. I'm willing to help you. If you wanna, if you want to be better. Give me a shout. Give me a try. All right, guys, this list pertains to you too. If I, I mention a green flag that maybe you're lacking in it, you can learn. It's okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, being a better guy, but being a better dude. That's essentially what my coaching is all about and what this channel is all about. We all want to be better, better than we were yesterday. So if I hear something and it might offend you, Maybe that's that's a sign that's something that uh, you need to work on, right? So let's do it together. Let's get it done. Let's be positive. So first things first, you should feel attracted to a man to even consider them long term. That attraction has to be there. If you you know what I'm talking about, you feel attracted to somebody either physically, emotionally. Do they have to look like Brad Pitt? No. It doesn't always work that way. Certain women prefer certain guys, and guys prefer certain women. It's just personal preference. But you should feel that attraction towards a particular person. That's something that you cannot replicate. In my opinion, it doesn't grow with time. Either you have it or you don't. Can you work on being more attractive? Yes, 100%. But you need to have that spark long-term because... Tough times will happen, and that spark and that attraction really, really helps with the, with the tough times. So ladies, what you're looking for is a balance between the lover side of things and the provider side of things. A guy like that has a tendency to be pretty rare. Are they out there? Yes. I know plenty of guys that, that, that really balance those two traits together. You've got the lover who is the risk taker. The stylish guy, the attractive guy, the fun guy, and you also have the provider side where they're the money maker, 
uh, think you're Bill Gates type of character, um, somebody that might be a little bit dorky, <laughs> or um, but somebody that can that can earn a living, somebody that you can rely on financially. That's the provider. You can have a balance between those two guys. Typically, a guy that's pure lover is not a good guy to be with long term, and a guy that's a pure provider isn't a, a great guy to be with long term. You're looking for a balance of those two things. So when it comes to marriage. There's three basic traits that I've seen in pretty much all of the literature that will hedge your bets against divorce. The most successful marriages, typically they get married at age 25. When we're talking about first marriages here, age 25, college educated, and typically through their life, when they're established, they're typically at the top 20% of income. That's household income, which in the United States is right around $130,000 for the household. Those three traits have a tendency to produce very good first marriages. Am I saying that everybody out there meets these criteria? Absolutely not. But those are the people that have a tendency to make it long term. Your chances of actually getting divorced, if you actually meet all three of those traits, is about 20%, which is one in five. It's not the 50% statistic that you hear all the time. What I'm going to give you in this episode is somebody that is capable of making a good living so that the chances of you being in the top 20% financially are higher. So the key, find a dude you're physically attracted to and you can bet on it when it comes to building a future financially. So someone that you're attracted to, which is your lover, and somebody that can provide a good living, that's your provider. That's the guy that you're looking for. You're looking for a good bet. So you're looking for a guy you can bet on long term in the future. Or you're looking for a guy that's actually already proven himself if you're a little bit older. Or if you've been through a divorce already, this list pertains to all guys. So if you're liking this and you're getting something out of it so far, please like, share, and subscribe. Keep getting the word out. We're building a, a good, positive community and channel here, and I could use your support. So here's the five green flags, starting with number one. Is he a good decision maker? Does he make decisions? Does he ask you questions? Or does he decide for himself? Does he decide where to go to eat when, you, when you're on a date? Example, where do you want to go, babe? Versus Let's do Mexican tonight. Those two things are polar opposites. One is he's, he's deferring his judgment to you. And the other one is he's making a decision for both of you. So here's example statements from, from, a, from a guy that you want. You want an assertive guy, a decision maker. I want to go to XYZ or we should go to XYZ. Those are the things that you're looking for. What you don't want is what do you want to do? Assertive is the key here, and being passive is not a great quality for a guy. You're looking for assertive. So that's number one, decision maker. Does he make decisions? Number two, does he have discipline? Discipline is huge for a guy. Is he impulsive? Impulsive is the, is the opposite of disciplined. Does he spend money he doesn't have? Does he have trouble saying no? And that includes you, especially when it includes you. If he can't say no to you, that's a problem. That's a red flag. So a green flag is, is he disciplined? Does he have addictive tendencies? That's a little subset of discipline. Does he drink to get drunk? Does he play a lot of video games excessively? A little bit of video games is okay. Everybody needs to chill out a little bit. Not totally attacking you if you play a lot of video games, but do you play video games eight hours at a time? That's when it becomes a problem and addictive. Drug use, obvious, obvious red flag. Disciplined men have a tendency not to engage in this kind of behavior. Does he take care of himself physically? We're, we're not just talking about the gym here or his diet. We're talking about hygiene. Does he take care of himself? cleanliness. Does he 
does he care about how he smells and how he looks? These are all aspects of discipline in men. So that's number two, discipline. Is he disciplined? Number three, is he agreeable? Is he, is he enjoyable to be around, generally speaking? If you take a look at my wife material episode, this one overlaps. You want a guy that's going to be agreeable. And guys, you want a woman that's agreeable. But agreeable in a man is a little bit different when it comes to women. Humor. Is he funny? Is he fun to be around? Can he make you laugh? And then most importantly, can he make you laugh when you're down? That's a great quality in a dude, especially when it comes to a husband, because you're going to have tough times. And the best remedy for stress in a difficult time is laughter. You cannot be sad or mad when you're laughing. It's not possible. So can he, can he lift you up with a laugh? Is he patient? Is he a patient guy? That's a great quality in a father because children will test your patience all the time. So is he a patient guy? Does he have a positive mindset? Is he a glass half full guy or is he a half empty guy? Does he have an abundance mindset as opposed to a scarcity mindset? That is critical. That is huge. An abundance mindset is basically if something goes bad, he knows no matter what happens in his life, he's going to be okay. No matter what. That's an abundance mindset. Now, if he's too agreeable, he could be a people pleaser and that's not a good quality in a man either. Conflict avoidance is perhaps the the most common trait I see in guys that I've coached. It leads to problems down the road if you avoid conflict, eventually that conflict is going to come back and bite you. Does he embrace the conflict, deal with it, and move on? That's a very, very big-time green flag for a man. How do you test that in a guy? Similar test for women. How does he treat others? Waitresses, coworkers, friends, people on the street. How does he treat those people? So agreeable. That's number three. Number four drive? Does he have the want to? Does he have initiative and passion? That's all related to drive. Is he a driven dude? Drive is a direct reflection of passion. If you aren't passionate about something, you're going to lose your drive eventually. If things are hard, does that motivate him? If he deals with people that doubt him, does it make him work harder? That's a huge green flag for guys. When it comes to husbands, that's what you're looking for. You really, really want that. So if somebody tells him he can't do something, does that motivate him to work harder? For instance, somebody says, you can't be a doctor because that's too hard or that's not possible for you. Does he say something like, watch me? Watch me. It's okay. If you think I can't do it, I'm going to work harder. I'm going to prove you wrong. That's, that's a go-getter. That's a guy with drive and passion. Is he passionate about life and what he does on a daily basis? Does he waste time often? We talked about that with the addictive tendencies. Does he play video games a lot? Does he engage in things that don't produce a positive outcome? Does he waste time? Is he driven? Is he passionate? Huge green flag for guys. So that's number four. And number five, in my opinion, the most important trait to look for in a husband. Does he have a purpose and a plan? Those two things go together. It's, it's one thing to be passionate about something, totally different when you actually have follow through. Follow through is the key. You can have a dude that's very, very passionate about something that doesn't finish the task. Follow through. A quote that I'm fond of is a goal without a plan is a wish. 100% true. So if you've got a 22-year-old mama's boy who hasn't left the nest at that age, that's a huge red flag. That's a, that's a dude that doesn't have purpose or a plan. Can he learn? Can he adapt? Yes. Are the chances lower for a guy that's 22 that's living in his parents' basement as opposed to a dude that's 19 years old, knows exactly what he wants to do, and knows how to get it? Huge difference between those two guys. So by the time a guy is 30, he should be well on his way to being a great provider and protector, which essentially that's, that's the role that a husband and a father needs to have 
and it's critical. That's, that's your role as a man. You're the provider and the protector overall. And you want to be a lover at the same time. That's a balancing act that a lot of guys have trouble with. And frankly, ladies, if you've got a guy that has both of those traits, that, that can pull off a good lover and a provider at the same time, you better hold on to that guy. Okay, That guy's more rare than a guy that's a pure provider or a pure lover. The guy that can balance both of those, those two worlds, that's a rare guy. If a guy is 35 and hasn't established himself at that point, he may never. Uh, and if he's 40 and hasn't established himself, that's a major red flag in my book, 100%. Honestly, by the time 35 rolls around and he hasn't really figured out his plan and purpose, that's a, that's a pretty big red flag. So you're looking for a guy that's got purpose and a plan. Everyone has rough spots, but if he consistently can't hold a job, it's a problem. That's a problem. Does he have purpose and a plan? That's the number one green flag that you're looking for in a dude, especially when they're younger. So in closing, don't rush into marriage. Vet a dude. Look for the green flags. Don't ignore the red flags, but look for these green flags in guys. There's a lot of really good men out there. Don't listen to all the haters out there. There's haters on both sides of, of the sexes. <laughs> Women think there's, a, there's no good men left, and, and men think exactly the same about women. That's not true. Look for the green flags. Everybody can be better. If he doesn't satisfy all of these green flags, it's okay. These are, these are all the things that you're looking for, but people can learn over time. And I'm talking to you guys. If you're lacking in some of these categories, be better than you were yesterday. That's the name of the game. Do you, can you... Can you achieve all of that overnight? Most likely not necessarily. It does take time to get better, a little bit at a time. Within a couple of years, you'd be well on your way. So vet a man for at least 18 months before even thinking about moving in with him, let alone getting married. 18 months. Limerence lasts 18 months on average to about 36 months. If you look at the statistics, people can fake it. Up until that point, by the time 18 months rolls around, which is about a year and a half or two years, you're going to know who you're dealing with at that point. The person you choose to marry is one of the biggest decisions you'll make in your life. Take a look at the green flags, don't ignore the red flags, and have a great life. So stick around for more great content in the future. Thanks for watching, and be desirable.